Hey, welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. Don here. Um, what I'm going to be including here in just a, a minute or so is a explanation. It's part of a lecture that Paul Hobro gave about shockwave and specifically how to explain shockwave to patients. I think you're going to like it. It's about a, an eight minute segment because I couldn't take his whole lecture. Um, but these same questions that he goes over, uh, I've included them in my patient presentations. So if you want to go get my um, patient presentations tool, it's on podiatrypracticemastery.com. Just put your email in there. Go to the one on plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis. You're going to see these same questions that he asked. They're included in these, these slides that I use for each of my patients. Uh, use them. But here, listen to see what Paul has to say. And uh, if you want to learn more about Paul Holbro, I'll put a, a little link underneath this episode so you can learn more about him. Okay. Thanks, guys. That in such a way that they understand it and they go, yeah, I want to get my wallet or purse out now and I want to pay you a load of money for you to treat me with that. So you've got to be quite engaging when you do it. So I didn't think about at this stage making everyone really uncomfortable and say, I want you to write down how you would explain shockwave to me. And I was going to get someone to stand up and say it, but I'm going to be kind to you because that's, uh, that's one of those things that's slightly irritating when the speaker does it. But I would say that when a patient says to me, so what is shockwave? I say it's a healing modality that's probably going to speed up your healing by about 50%. It's got an 82% success rate. And what we can do is supercharge your healing. Your body may well have stored, this is like a defibrillator when you restart the heart. It's like a defibrillator restarting the natural healing processes. But not only are we going to restart it, we're going to 10x it, and we're going to end up with you being back doing the things you love far quicker than if you don't use it. But it's going to double the cost of your treatment. So it's up to you. Wherever you decide is the right decision, I'll work as best as I can to help you get to where you want to go. Then when they say, well, what about EMTT? I say, well, this is an add-on, because we can kickstart your healing process and we can speed the whole thing up. But if we do EMTT, we're going to reboot your cells, just like your old laptop, which when you reboot it, starts to go faster again. If we reboot those cells, and then we zap them, then everything is, is gonna work so much better. And the combination is greater than some of its parts. And those RCTs, two of them, prove that shockwave versus shockwave and EMTT, shockwave and EMTT outperform shockwave on its own. So we've got science to prove that. So, EMTT, reduce pain, inflammation, optimize the cell. Radial pressure wave to the surrounding tissue. ESWT to treat the underlying pathology. And exercise therapy to treat the cause of the injury. Hopefully that landed yesterday. I'm not just about treating the little bit, because frankly, anyone can do that. If you've got enough money, you could buy a machine, you could stick it on the bit that hurts, and you could treat it successfully, and the person walks out, and you've got rid of their pathology. Big fucking wow, well done you, yeah? <laughs> if you're not gonna change what's happening with the human body, then what have you done? You've just given them three to six months where they've got to come back in again, but you didn't fix them. So this becomes a really important element. So, how do I introduce two friends to each other? So I've got my patient coming in, I consider them a friend, yeah? And I've got Shockwave over here, which is one of my best friends. And I want to try and get those two people to enjoy each other's company. So a step-by-step -step approach to patient engagement, ethics, and concordance. Now, concordance is a huge word, okay? Concordance means that it's not the doc saying, this is what you need, and they go, okay. Concordance is when you educate the person and they have an opportunity to make a decision based upon what you've told them or what they've learned and what they've understood. And if they're making the decision, they are far more likely to engage. For those of you that got staff, if you walk in one day and go, by the way, the system that we work on is all changed and it's now this, their buy-in is minimal. If you say to them, here's the problem, we're gonna to work together to find a solution, everyone's on board by the time that solution is adopted because they're all involved in the process. If you don't involve the patient in the process, you're just doing something passively to them and they're hoping that it might work. When you educate them, they're then on board and then they get involved and then they get great outcomes. And by the way, they're really happy to pay for it. So, how do we introduce? We educate them. First of all, you've got to achieve a diagnosis, right? And you've got to demonstrate that to your patient. The easiest demonstration in the world is 
when someone has ITB friction syndrome. Iliotibial band runs down the side of the leg there. Its origin is at the TFL and the glute max. And you can put them in sideline and you can do what's called an Ober's test, which is a pretty average test, but it's very, very easy. If you put them in a position for the Ober's test, their knees should drop and hit the couch. Yeah? If it doesn't, it's hanging in midair, and you can measure one, two, three, four fingers, a whole fist, two fists, distance from the couch. And your patient can see very, very easily that their lateral knee pain is coming from their TFL. And if those of you that um, don't have great anatomy and physiology, if you've got some sexy jeans on today, just inside your right pocket, there's a little pocket, which we used to put coins. And if you put two fingers into your coin pocket and you push down, that's where your TFL is. That's where most of lateral knee pain comes from because that gets tight. The IT band has a tensile strength of steel. You can foam roll it, you can shock wave it, you can do any kind of percussion device on it. It isn't going to lengthen. The only thing that's going to change that is the TFL. So when we do a little bit of trigger pointing on the TFL and the patient sees their knee drop into the couch, it's like the lights come on. We've achieved so that they can see that you can test and measure and diagnose with some of these really easy tests that the patient can see and buys into. They do five single leg squats, get back on the couch, it's all tightened up again. We haven't achieved anything. All we've done is help to understand. We then must give them options. So in a second I'm going to go through how I give options about what treatments they might have. And then we've got to give them an opportunity to decide. This is where the ethics come into it. I've educated you about Shockwave. I think it'd be a great treatment option to you. I've made it as one of my three options for you to decide, but I'm not going to sit there silently. Hmm? What do you want to do? Do you want, do you want to go for it? Is this now? So I explain to you in a second how you give that bit of time, that bit of delay, to give them a chance to think about what they want to do. And this is really important to me from an ethical point of view. Stay focused on the patient. Is offering the modality their only or best option? It has an 82% success rate, so you'll struggle many times to convince me that it's not their best option, but is it their only option? Are we going to leave them destitute, unable to feed their kids or, or heat their house because we've taught them into this, yeah? So we've got to think about what the options are that they could have. So, the way I introduce my patient to the process of, let's call it the Paul Hover method because it sounds good, um, I ask them three questions. So they come in, they say, my knee hurts. Keep it simple. I say, what are the three things that you can't do as a result of this knee pain? And they wrap them off, and that goes in my notes. So I can't bend down to pick up my baby when they're crawling around the floor. I can't run, and actually I'm struggling to do my job. Okay, they're three pretty big things, yeah? So what are your three goals when you're pain-free? If we're successful working together, what are the three goals that you'd like to achieve? And it might be, well, I want to run the Chicago Marathon. It might be that I want to be pain-free and not feeling like a 90-year-old when I'm only 35. It could be all sorts of things, but they're their goals. And you write them down, and guess what? If you refer back to these at the end of your six weeks of, of, of treatment with them, or maybe another month on top of that, and you say, these are the three goals you said to me a couple of months ago. How are we doing on those? 